That's what I'm telling you. Why does it not have? Why does it not make sense to put like a greater than or less than sign in the null? Because the null is already supposedly being tested. Good. It's an idea that's already out there. Good. You've got a number that's out there, Against and you're trying to see if you're getting away from that. So the null with the equal sign, essentially, you draw a curve around that center value. And you say, okay, here's the center value, 70%. For the, for the girls and their weight loss, what was the center value for them? What was the center value for the, for the girls? If you try to see if their, if, their weight loss if their weight gain happened, I should say. Zero. Zero, because you're going to assume that, that, that no weight was gained. You're saying zero. So the idea is you're starting at that center value, and you're seeing if you're getting far away from it. If you get far away from it, that means something has changed. You should get a small p value, because you're no longer on that curve. Good. That's why it makes more sense to draw the, the equal sign in the, in the null hypothesis, because you can see if you've gotten away from that null hypothesis. It's way trickier, and you'll see it in the quiz if you choose to do the quiz for next week. The quiz for next week is another match pairs test, but part of the quiz is also looking at type 2 error, which is calculating the probability of a false negative, not a false positive, which can happen. Right? False negatives can happen. Oh, sure, sure, that, that climbing rope's fine. Go ahead and repel off that 300-foot three-spanning spire. <laughs> right? Negative test result. We tested it. It looked fine. No reason to think anything was wrong. And then it snaps on me when I'm hanging, you know, with all my gear off the, uh, off the edge of a cliff. False negatives are a problem. They can be a problem. They can be a problem. Oh, this medicine has no side effects whatsoever. You know, anal leakage? Ah, no anal leakage in this medicine. <laughs> then you take it. You get, so so the, 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 point, the point is, the point is, is that false negatives should be considered in certain cases. False positives, false positives can be more acceptable sometimes than false negatives. For example, in, in really noxious spam emails, really noxious spam. I think I've told you guys about this before. When you look at your email account, do you guys ever say, have, a, have spam come through your COC email account? Where you get an email, it's, it's clearly a spam. It's somebody trying to sell something. Do you ever celebrate for that little thing? So some of you have never seen a spam in your COC email account. That's because the spam filter is freaking amazing here. Every once in a while, I want to sneak through mine. And I think I used to tell you guys, I used to email them back. Like, if they would, if I would make it through, I'd send a reply and I'd email them back. I'm like, here's a better idea. Rub the Tabasco sauce on your hand, shove it on your pants. And then I'd delete them, and then I'd jump them, and then I'd, send, then I'd send an email to IT saying, I got the spam. They're like, dude, don't respond to them. <laughs> they won if you do that. I'm like, I didn't click on the links inside. They're like, yes, but you did respond, and now they've got it in. So don't respond to them, jump them. But celebrate first, because that spam got through. It was a false negative. It was tagged as a legitimate email. Spam filters are, the positive test result for spam means it's positively spam. So if it gets through and it's spam, that's a false negative, right? It was flagged as a correct email, it's a negative test result, falsely. False positives, false positives are, check your junk mail folder every once in a while for all the, de the, all the, the legit emails that get junked. And that happens way more frequently than false negatives. The reason being, it's easier for you guys to go in and check your junk mail folder to make sure nothing's legit, and then you can set it as not junk, and then the, then the spam filter lets it through. But the noxious ones, they don't want the noxious ones to get through, because you could lose an entire hard drive of information, let alone a network uh, potential of information, if somebody like me tells them to rub the best go on the crotch. So, I mean, that's the thing about false positive versus false negatives. You have to look at both of them in differing situations, because they can both have varying levels of, of severity. Severity, sorry, New York one there. Severity. Cool? Yeah. Decent. So that's next week. That's next week. It starts getting into the really, really the nuts and bolts of hypothesis testing, and I want to get into some more of that today with an example of some data collected at my house. But um, any other questions or concerns? Just so you know, I hate in class exams. I despise them. But every term I send the surveys out and I hear what people have to say about them, and it's it's almost inevitably split half and half. I'm gonna ask you guys again. Um, pretty soon you'll be doing class evals for, for the class. I want to hear everything you guys have to say for sure. And I'm going to try to get some custom questions in those evals, one of which is if you could change anything in, in, the, in the assessment process of this class, which is the projects, the quizzes, the exams, anything, any part of it, what would you change? If I can't get those into the evals, I'll send you guys a survey monkey link. It won't be spam, it'll be for me. It'll be legit, it won't be a false positive. Uh, uh, or a false negative, I guess. Um, but I really want to, I want to get some more ideas from folks about other ways of, of assessing. Moving half of the exams out of class I think was a good idea, but I hate watching you guys take in-class exams. I despise it. It seems artificial to me. It seems like the kind of thing that doesn't happen in the real world. But it seems like every term I do the survey, it's the class is split half and half. Like some people like, like that. That's maybe because we're used to it, because we're used to that's the way school is. 
Um, it doesn't have to be. So I'm curious to hear your ideas on that in the last couple of weeks as we survey you guys. Yes, Eric, I know it's thrilling. All right. No, I'm just sleeping. I know you are. It's okay, dude. It's okay. So anyway, that's that. We'll put this over here for now. Any other comments, concerns? Remember, we've got your out of class part for next week, yes? Got your out of class part for next week. It's got a, sp it's got a spreadsheet attached to it. You're going to be dealing with a non-parametric way of uh, doing a hypothesis test, which is actually a super fun way. I wish I had more, more Excel availability for us in class. Please, Ash. Um, is there a radiant to ponder again or two? There will be when you get this one back. Okay. Just like exam one, yes, ma'am. Absolutely, absolutely. Just not exam three, because I won't see you after that. <laughs> Please, Rose. Did you intend to send that email to only the two or three class? No. I, I always forget which email, which CRM theirs is. So if I want one class, I just email all four, and I figure the rest of you will just believe. I was just making sure. Uh-uh. No, I, 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 I mean, ideally, yes. But then I was like, ah, I can't remember which one it is. I'll just email them all. OK. So that's just laziness on my part. Just make I figure you can just press delete if you don't like it. I just wanted to make sure that you are good. You're good. Yeah. yeah, it went to all my classes, yeah. so hopefully the one that whoever picked up my TI will get that and be like, oh crap. <laughs> yes? Good? All right, so next week, you've got a couple Excel-based things to do. You've got that the out-of-class part, which is essentially one hypothesis test. It's going to be more similar to the CDC problem than the girls' weight loss problem. It deals with uh, an article I read a couple years ago about epileptic patients and seizures during full moon cycles. Kind of interesting stuff. Um, and it's one of those things, Chris was in here talking about it. It was claims made by epileptic, ep epileptic patients to their doctor about what they perceived as what was going on with their seizure rates. And very scientifically, he said, well, let's just test them and see if your claim actually holds up with what you're saying. So what you'll do is you'll actually test the claim of these epileptic patients versus the doctor's data that he collected. And then you're going to go further because the test that he got was interesting. The results he got were interesting and actually pointed kind of a different way. And that's what the whole, the whole 50 points is kind of like that. And then your other one, the other project has an Excel component. It deals with, remember the Deepwater Horizon explosion? It's getting to be, it's about four years, maybe three years back now, uh, off the coast of uh, Gulf Mexico, in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, big platform blew up, and then things sank, and, they, and then spewed oil for 86 days or something like that. I remember when, that, when the Coast Guard first came on TV, um, and we're, they were talking about how much oil is, is leaking into the, into the Gulf. And I think he said, oh, it's like 100 barrels a day or something. And I had just seen a YouTube clip of that flow. And I'm like, no, no, that's not 100 barrels a day. That's, that's a one ton more than that. So what I, what I did was I set up some, some cool data collection methods for, on those videos. That's all the data I had on those videos. BP was being very tight-lipped about what was going on, obviously. Um, but some folks had gotten the, the video of, of the uh, pipe actually leaking in the first couple days. And a scientist down in Louisiana, who obviously would care about this, being right next to it, um, got some really cool slick tracking software. And it's called, um, what's it called? They mentioned it in the project, you'll see it. But uh, it, it, it talks about uh, how you can look at a, a motion of particle in a, in a video. And you can track that particle through the video. And then if you put a scale on the video, like say this is a foot, it'll tell you how fast that particle is moving in the video. So assuming it's moving basically uh, perpendicular, I guess, or parallel to your line of sight, you'll know how fast you're going. So if Jack was walking on his mountain bike in a video, as long as it's not too skewed coming at me going away from me, it's in more of a straight line to figure out how fast Jack is going, arguably, to the nearest one or two miles an hour. Assuming that I know you've got 26 inch bike wheels. So I can say this to this is 26 inches, here comes Jack, and it'll tell me you're going 22 miles an hour. And they'll say, be careful. Make sure you don't slow on that turn. So, but anyway, that's the point. And then we got from that data, from six data points, you can extract a better estimate of the Coast Guard hat. That's what you guys are going to be doing, that project. So, do that stuff. A lot of Excel stuff next week. A lot of Excel stuff next week. So. Cool? But no Excel stuff today. No Excel stuff today. Today, I want to talk about.